Hello everyone, and this video will hopefully be both fun and helpful. The fun part comes from the fact that we're looking at how to use points in Vega Lite, which is of course the language that we use to create visualizations in Deneb, in Power BI. So what is a point? So let's get to the point. Sorry, terrible joke. Um, let's get to the point and see what, what a point actually is. A point is simply, as the, doc the documentation says right there, it represents each data point with a symbol. So if we look at this visualization here, you can see that I am using a point. At, at this point, they look just like circles. Yeah, because each point is a circle because that's what the default value is. So actually, if I were to choose here and say circle, then would have a slightly smaller circle, but it would still be a circle. So there, therefore, what's the point of using a point? I'm not making the jokes on purpose, I promise. Um, it's for this reason, you can choose a number of different shapes when you use a mark type point. So how do you do that? Quickly go back to the documentation to have a look. It's very straightforward. As you can see here, we have arrow, we have circle, we have a square, all this sort of stuff. So if I just choose any one of these, I can change the shape of my point. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to simply say point and then I'm going to say shape and I'm just going to write the name of the shape that I want to use. So let's just say we, we want to use an arrow. And when I apply that change, there'll be arrows because so, they're really small. So let's just change that. So let's just say size and I don't know, 200. So now we have decent size arrows. Um, make them bigger. Okay. So now we have our arrows. Cool. That's nice. Maybe not in this context, but you know, for other situations, you could use an arrow. And if you go back to the documentation, you can see we have any number of options. Um, so if you see we have arrow, so triangle up and triangle down, all this sort of thing. However, it gets more interesting if you look at this. And this are these bottom two. So this is not a name, it's a code of some sort. So I check what this is, and this is an SVG path. And if we look at the editor version here, what I can do is I can just copy this and I can put it in my visualization. And I'm going to go shape. And instead of saying arrow, I'm just going to copy and paste that code. Now we have this shape. It's a star because that SVG path literally draws the shape of the star. It's really cool. Um, so naturally, I wanted to see what I could do, because if it's just an SVG path, then you can use any SVG path, right? So what happened was I did some research and I was, of course, led to an article by um, Kerry Colosco. If you use Deneb, you will understand that all roads will lead to Kerry Colosco. This one was no exception. And she has this great blog post and every link that I referenced in this video will be posted in the description. So it's all there. So she was saying, okay, so I have this SVG path and I kind of copied it and again, tried it. So this should give us a nice heart shape. So this was great. Um, beautiful hearts, very sweet. Um, but what I couldn't do, I couldn't find a good source to get SVG paths. I didn't want to you know, draw them myself. It's too time consuming and I'm not good enough. Um, so I looked for a while and I couldn't find anything. Luckily at this point, really coincidentally, um, another person who I, I know of through Vega Light and that kind of stuff, um, Taze, he was kind enough to send me a link to a, a website. So if you don't know Taze, first of all, he creates amazing stuff with Vega Light and Deneb. Love his work. So definitely check out his Deneb templates. Again, link in the video description. Taze himself was inspired to do what he did through the work of Shad. So I really like how it's this very kind of like accidental collaborative effort here. So really check out all these sources because they're all amazing people who do amazing work. 
But what Tay sent me was this link, a website called Font Awesome. And with Font Awesome, you can have a paid subscription if you want or free. I'm using free. Um, and any one of these icons, there are 2016 free icons. If you don't have free, there are like, yeah, 19,287. So a huge number. But again, even with free, a lot, like a lot. So uh, pretty much everything that you'll need. And what you can do with this is that you can use any one of these icons and get the SVG path really easily. How do you do it? Just like this. So I'm going to choose one that I want to use. And let's say I want to use a fast truck. Why not? Eh? Here, I'm going to click on this to copy the SVG code. Now it doesn't copy it completely perfectly. You do have to do a tiny change, but like really a tiny, tiny change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this and I'm going to paste this SVG code just here so you can see it and to see what you have to remove. Yeah, so what you want to do is remove everything before and after these quotation marks here, yeah? because as you can see, that's how we put them in and that's all we need. So now if I just do this, now this is going to be far too large. So that is something to bear in mind when you use this SVG codes, um, that you need to make the size very small. So here, like that. And I'm going to make the size, as I say, really small, 0 0.0. 0, 0.01, really so small, and have a look. Cool. So now you can see I've used that SVG uh, path to have these little fast cars. Now, uh, fast trucks, I should say. Now, of course, I understand when are you going go to want to use a fast truck in your reports? Probably never, unless you have a very specific data set. That's fine. As I said, there are 2,016 of them, and many of them are appropriate. Um, I'm going to show you some examples in a second, but just really to show, as you can see here, even though we're using this SVG path, it's not at all impacting any of our um, formatting that we have in the color. Exactly the same it was before when we had the circle. So that's really great to know. So that's how you actually physically do it. That's how you get your um, SVG path, um, SVG code path, whatever. And that's how you paste it in. So it's really straightforward. But to have some ideas of what you could do with it that maybe are that work well in standard reporting, um, I had a couple of ideas. Um, this was one of them. And actually, I think it works pretty well because what I've done here is to show when something is above or below plan data. Yeah. So if we have a look, so this is set up. I think in a pretty straightforward way. And um, here I've got my mark type point. My shape now isn't just saying I want a shape and specifying the shape. I'm then using the shape within an expression. And I'm saying if the actual minus plan is less than zero, then I want this shape. If it's not, I want the other shape. That's why I have an arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing down. I've also used an expression to show the color. So again, same thing. If actual minus plan is less than zero, then give me gray. If not, give me red. Why didn't I choose green? Because I just chose not to. Um, I could have green if I wanted to, but I don't know. I kind of liked just drawing attention to the red rather than the red and the, um, the red and green. So that's what I have. So as you can see, it's really, really easy to use the points. You're literally saying mark type point shape, either specify the shape or as I've demonstrated here, you can choose which shape that you, you are using given any circumstance that, that you want to describe. So where mine is above or below um, plan data, that kind of stuff. So really easy to use, but very helpful in regards you can do a lot with it. Because there are so many of types of shape, um, as you saw in this article that I mentioned before from Eric Kerry Colosco, she's using like sheep, which I thought was quite cool. And she's got stars and plants. Um, so I didn't do anything that, that fun. I um, simply had another idea with a different type of data. 
So my idea was to, with a different type of data, just to show this visualization um, with dogs, because I found dogs, um, I found a data set about dogs and dog intelligence. So what I have here is a different icon, and you know, it's easy to find them if, if you know what you kind of want. I wanted to find dogs, so I went here and I typed the word dog, and then here we go. That's the icon that I used. I got it in exactly the same way. Clicked on here, clicked on there, copy it. Go back to my SV, um, back to my PBIX, sorry. And then I paste it in there. And then I have my dog. Another thing that I did is I added a, um, a rule here. So type rule, so I can, instead of saying type, I don't know, type bar, for example, um, which would, you could do that way. I went with a type rule because I wanted I wanted to do was kind of play around a little bit and have the line look like the dog on a lead. Um, so I have the dog at a certain angle. So when you kind of zoom in, you can see that the dog looks like he's on a lead from the, the rule. I don't know, it was just an idea. Um, other formatting things you can do, as I mentioned before, you can completely format these um, so that they look a certain way. It's not like you just have the SVG path. You can color them, you can format them. So I have stroke black um, because I thought it looked good. You can choose whatever gray if you want. You can choose whatever color makes you happy. Um, red to go with the rest, but it looks a bit strange now. So color black to give it that nice outline. You can also change the opacity if you want, 0 0.5. So you have a, a you know, more transparent dog if you want to. Change the stroke width. I've got 1.2, you can change it to one. You can change it to whatever you like, change this zero. You know, all the standard formatting stuff that you can do with your marks, you can also do with the um, the, the, the SVG paths with the when you're using a, a shape point. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say about points in Vega Light. This is, um, there are a huge number of cases where you could use them, whether you're creating something that's more infographic-y, when you want to draw attention to something. Um, there's loads of um, possibilities to use icons in Power BI, and this is just a great resource, and you can use them in a really nice way in Vega Light and Dena because of the massive number of ways you can format them. And as I say, if you want something that's very just business case. The thing that I liked was um, this with the up and down arrows, because it's not really out there. But I think it's really clear. And it's a very good case of I can use this in whatever report that I'm building, just to make it look a bit more um, interesting, but at the same time, clear for the user. That's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, get some nice ideas out of it. All the links that you will need to do any of this plus the links that um, I mentioned just for people who had contacted me and helped me with data sources um, like Taze and, and Kerry with her great article and uh, Shad with his just fantastic Vega Light stuff, all linked. If you like this video, like, subscribe, all that YouTube type stuff. Um, if you would say you would have done something differently, have any comments, any ideas, post them in the comments. Always appreciate it. I'll always try to get back to you. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this. Take care and... Goodbye.